Hi, my name is Alex and I live in this rather small farming town. We have a church on the hill and one very local grocery store and somehow there's a Dollar General too. Life here is rather simple and easy. I wake up, I turn on my studio and I broadcast music for the town. It's nothing special, just a classic rock and some country but I made decent money off it. One thing I noticed our signal never goes past is the town borders. My only guess is that there is something to do with the magnetosphere, but I'm no scientist. About a year ago around the middle of August, something weird started happening. Military trucks and other large equipment started showing up in town. They took over the church as a base of operations. They even put large fences and barbed wire all around it. Whatever they were doing must have been serious. It wasn't but a few days after they did that they started testing the air raid siren that we have. The only way to really get to it was in my shed, as I owned the radio station, and enough power supply to run the siren and the station if there was a blackout. So, guess what the boys did? If you said, annexed my station and shed, you are correct. It wasn't really a big deal, they sounded like they needed it for something, and they'd been paying me twice what I was making, so I'm not really angry at all. So, I've been staying at my little brother's and his new wife's home for the past few years. The day that I moved in, it was all nice and happy, until at exactly 1pm, all the military guys started corralling all the people to their homes in a rush too. They seemed scared like the whole lot of them had seen a ghost. It's a silly thought, I know. However, they weren't taking no's as they were really rough with the townsfolk. Looking through the blinds, I see that they were all done getting everyone in their houses. Maybe they're running some sort of test. Well, it turns out that less than 10 minutes after that, we hear the siren go off. Stay inside and go to the nearest room without windows. If you can't, close the blinds and cover your ears and eyes. This is not a drill. Do not leave for any reason. If someone is caught leaving, they will be marked as a threat. If you hear knocks at the window or door, do not answer it, even if it's family or friends and even if they are in a dire situation. Again, this is not a drill, and we will let you know when to come out. It went on with this same message for a few hours. I was in my room, which luckily is located in the basement. I could hear someone upstairs slamming on the doors, and I could hear my brother talking to his wife. We gotta check, honey. It's my friend, Aaron, he said in a hushed tone. I slowly walk up the stairs and hearing his wife say, Well, here, take your gun and at least be ready for anything. As I got to the top of the stairs, I creaked the door open to see what is going on. Aaron, I'm going to open the door, but you gotta run in fast, okay? I can hear a muffled. Hey, 10-4, buddy. It wasn't Aaron. It was something deep sounding that I felt. Immediate fear and I closed my door before they opened their front door. I heard Aaron say, And ye shall overthrow their altars, and break their pillars, and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods, and destroy the names of them out of that place. After that, I heard shots fire. It was my brother, I'm sure of it. His wife Sammy was screaming and tried to come into the basement with me, but I locked the door. I heard the false Aaron walk up to Sammy as she was screaming. It was then that I heard the cracking and twisting of bone. Her cries went silent and so did the home. I could hear Aaron eating. I kept my face covered as the smell wafted through the air. I could see what was left of them flowing through the bottom of the basement door. It wasn't long when I heard this thing knock at my door. I know you can hear me, child. Do not be afraid, as we are here to cleanse these sinners leaving only the saints. You are not a sinner. You can let me in. I didn't know what to do. 
I was frozen, but it felt like it was speaking into my brain. The sound of horns were ringing in my head. Child, you cannot ignore me. I am all that was and will be. I know you. I uncovered my ears and checked up the stairs. I noticed the door got unlocked, so I yelled back. What did you do to my brother? What is it that you want? At this point, I'm nearly pissing myself in fear. Your brother and his wife committed a grave, unforgivable sin. We cannot let it slide. Let me in, child. You need not be afraid. I sat there thinking and I slowly walked up the stairs. It felt autonomous and I couldn't stop my own movement. There is no fighting this. You are a saint and you will obey and listen. I do not know what to do at this point. What did he mean that I'm a saint? It was then that I slowly started to twist the doorknob. At full force, the sirens were wailing once again, and I regained my consciousness and composure. I quickly locked the door again and ran down the stairs. I could hear the thing say, We will meet again, my child. Go now, on God's good grace. This voice was loud and thundered in my head, leaving my ears to ring. I could only hear the siren afterward, and what sounded like giant wings flapping in the distance. Civilians, the coast is clear. I repeat, the coast is clear. We ask you to stay in your home so we can do some research. Please bear with us a little longer, thank you. It clicks off and these sirens start to die down. It wasn't but a few minutes when I hear, Oh my god, they've got another. Search the house for any survivors. I slowly opened the door and yelled, I'm alive, please help me. It was then that the door swung open as a large man pulled me into the kitchen. I found myself around five men armed to the teeth pointing guns at me. Test him, one guy said. I was immediately shoved against the wall and the guy testing me grabbed my arm and stuck a small needle and injected something. What are you doing to me? They all stared at me, waiting for a reaction, however, nothing happened. They all collectively sighed in relief, and the one that tested me said, You're coming with us. We have to ask you some questions. I looked around and the bodies of my brother and sister-in-law weren't there. All I could see was a black ash scattered throughout the kitchen and by the front door. What happened to them? I asked. They seemed to ignore my question and we walked outside. I could hear crying throughout the town. It looked like entire families were just erased out of existence. Some people never came out to look around. They were all probably scared out of their mind. I'm not even sure how many disappeared, but it had to have been in the dozens. We arrived at the old church. They opened up the front gate and they let us in. I can see that it was being patrolled by drones. Everywhere that I looked, there is a camera and no one was stationed outside. We get inside and it looks like they removed all the pews on the altar. Countless days I spent praying with my brother in these very halls. Running around the pews after hours while our father talked to the priest, I started to cry. I miss the little brother I once raised and played with. Seeing all that stripped and replaced by all kinds of machines, cables, and chairs. Almost a hundred different monitors, each with a person watching hours of surveillance footage. My brother gets slaughtered like a lamb and now this. It was way too much to handle. I broke into tears and so I shouted, Okay, I'm here now, so what the heck do you want? Sir, we know this is all too much, but we have to talk to you. I calmed down a little. I never was a confrontational, so I took a deep breath and I kept following them. They led me into the basement. There was high-end security scanning their eyes and it looks like a robot arm came out of the wall and poked them with a needle. Must be the same stuff that they had used on me. We passed through the security and walked down a hallway to a room at the end. This was the pastor's room. He had lived in the church, but he had passed a few years back. He was a good man. 
it feels kind of wrong going into his room. How many hours did this man poured into his community to save us in a time of sorrow? I remember it like it was yesterday. My father passed away when I was 16, leaving the radio station to me. I remember the priest here consoled me and said, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. It was a beautiful funeral. The whole town came by and hugged my brother and I. And we only had each other at this point, so I made it my mission to always take care of him. I saw the photo my dad and the priest took together. He was so happy back then before mom ran off. He was hardworking and always gave his time to help others in need. A good man. I'm happy that I got to know my father and remember talking to the priest in this room about some of the funny things about him. The memories come flooding back and I began to whelp a little. I took a deep breath, in and out. I had to swallow my feelings down as I was disassociating. It was then that I was asked to sit at the old oak table and to wait here. The man who had escorted me here asked if I needed anything. Uh, a coke? I said, quietly holding my face in my hands. I got it. The officer left the room. A few minutes later, someone else entered with two cokes and a notepad. Hello. He looked at his notepad. Alex. I'm the leader of this op, and we have some questions about what you saw. Yeah, you asked for a coke, right? He handed it to me, and I took it, opened it, and took a large gulp after I let out a sigh. I want to know where my brother and sister-in-law are before I answer anything. The man looked me in the eyes and took his sunglasses off, and I saw his eyes. They were all white like he had, cataracts. Your brother and sister-in-law are gone. We cannot help them now. He sighed and rubbed the back of his neck. Then you survived and resisted. We need to know why. I slammed my hands on the table. No, people don't just disappear. He tossed a file that he was holding in the notepad to me. Read. It'll explain everything. I opened the file. Inside was a series of pictures and notes. The pictures looked to be giant winged bees of just floating eyes and wings. This was in front of my home. I started to sweat and I turned to the next image. The bees changed shape into Aaron. And then the last picture was a grabby my bro my brother's head and ripping it off. I remember dropping the pictures and throwing up on the floor. What is that thing? The man put his glasses back on and handed me a tissue. It's an angel, Alex. Your brother and sister-in-law committed a sin. I'm sorry, but they're gone. We don't know where they took them, but it looks like that they're just gone. With no trace but black ashes that aren't even made of carbon. It's an element that we have yet to classify. I got myself together and asked, Why are you guys wanting to talk to me then? I didn't do any of this. He pointed to the file and said, Keep looking. As I was flipping through, the angel turned back to its normal form, and you can see straight into the home past the kitchen to the door that I was behind. But I wasn't. I was in front of the door, and I was staring at it. Why? Why didn't it attack me? The agent took the files back and said, very few people survive this, so let's get down to the point. You are a saint. Somehow, you are on a whitelist with these things. And so far, you and I are the only known ones. He sighs and says, That's why we came here, to find you. Everyone else in this town is either gone or scared out of their mind. We have to make them forget everything. I grabbed my head in confusion, running my hands through my jet black hair in a feeble attempt to calm myself. Why me? I said quietly. I could feel my heart racing. 
He was rushing to my face. You never committed a sin, and it's physically impossible for you to do as well. You can continue your life here, or you can choose to come with us. But in a year, they will come back. I thought to myself, I've got nothing left. My family is all gone, and my job was taken from me. I want to stay, but I feel like I'm safe with these people. I, I can... Can we wait a year to see what happens? I asked shakily. Yes. We will monitor the area. However, every year on August the 16th, this will happen again. We already sealed the area around the town off so no radio communication can enter or leave this place. We may ask you to come out during the event so we can monitor you. I took another large drink of my soda. Okay, I'll do it. With the idea of talking to the thing that took my only family away, I was furious. Shortly after, I was released and I went home. It's July now and nothing has happened since, and the missing townsfolk were replaced with agents, but no one other than me seemed to notice. Life has been normal and I was allowed to use my radio again. I'm counting down the days until this happens again. Will I be prepared? How can I stop them? I don't know. What I know is that the days draw closer, and I can hear the whispering of them above, and I know that they're watching. Once they come down here, I will know where my brother is. My brother and his wife's screams are burned into my brain. Another issue is the trumpets are getting louder, and I'm starting to hear chanting and bells chiming. It's day in and day out, non-stop. I've been contemplating ending it. I find myself about to go down that hole of no return and welcome the release of death. However, any time I get brave enough and I'm about to do it, I black out. I wake up usually on my bed, where I was sitting before thinking about doing it. Whatever is going on, whatever these things want is beyond me. And that's not the worst of it. It's when I sleep that's when, that's when the true nightmare begins. I feel like if I tell you guys this, it may help me cope just a little bit. The last message I sent out, everyone was rather nice. It's so much to unpack and if you have a weak stomach, please skip ahead if you want to. It all started last night. My dream while well, nightmare began with just a black canvas. It was just me, mindlessly drifting in a seemingly infinite void. But I couldn't wake up or move. That's all there was, just me in the dark floating. I started to panic, as it still to this very minute feels real and with that, it felt like this won't ever end. In my head, what felt like decades pass as I float in pure darkness with only my thoughts. It wasn't much longer. Maybe a year or two, it's hard to tell to be honest, that I started seeing something in the distance, slowly approaching me or was I approaching it. In the distance, there was a long hallway with no end. The hallway looked like the hospital halls that I used to frequent. It reminded me of how my dad lost his life to cancer. All the years that we spent, the countless hours crying and praying for him to get better. So yeah, I know these halls as if they were my home. It was scary how accurate this was, down to the light blue stripe and the off-white color of the walls. I finally floated to this hall and landed on the floor. I kept looking at the checkered patterned floor, thinking to myself on how life would be different if my father had survived, if my mother never ran away. Would my brother still be alive? Sorry for getting a little emotional, I just have to let you guys know exactly how it was. I decided to swallow my fears and judgment. As I walked down the hall, the only sound was my heavy footsteps echoing in the vast emptiness. After what seems like miles of walking, I came across the door. It, it's my father's room. I see a light on at the bottom of the door, and I can hear something else. It was my dad calling out to me. 
And so, I rushed through the door and saw my dad looking like he did long ago, young and healthy. I instantly rushed in and hugged my father. His cologne smelled as strong as it used to. His hug back was warm and inviting. I haven't felt this happy in my life. There, there, champ. My, oh my, you've grown. Look at how strong you are. You're as strong as an ox. My father said robustly, Thanks, Papa. I've been working on it a lot to help with depression. You don't know about losing you was the hardest thing in my life. Well, where's little Donnie? I missed him too. My dad tried to look behind me at the door, expecting my goofball brother to burst in. Pops, Donnie. And before I could say a word, he jumps out of the closet and yells, Dad, you're alive. I don't know how to process this. I saw my brother's ashes. Donnie, how are you even here? My brother looked at me. I don't rightly know how to be honest. I was opening my door for my buddy Aaron, and the next thing I know, I fell out of the closet. As my brother and father hug and catch up, I take a few deep breaths and ran my fingers through my hair, trying to find a way to tell my brother what happened. As I turn around and open my mouth, I hear the trumpets in full force. My head feels like it was going to explode. It was then that I see a grotesque, massive wing circling astronomical rings. On these rings were bloodshot red eyes of varying sizes and colors. Its very presence was distorting space around it. Its mere existence was causing my eyes to blur and my mind to raise. As it spoke to me, I could see the axis of all creation emerging and twisting. I was able to manage to say, What do you want? The being stopped moving. The sound of its rings were making was akin to rusty metal being wrapped. The song of metal scraping against metal is all that I can hear. And in an instant, I heard nothing. The darkness was all gone. I looked around and time was frozen. And all there was, was me and it. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places, wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods, upon the higher mountains, upon the hills, and upon every green tree. It spoke to me. It felt like my very soul was shaken and I couldn't stand on my own feet. What does it even mean? Why are you doing this? I let out with all my remaining strength. I took a deep breath and was able to pull myself up and stare this thing down. My child, you know not of what's to come. You must follow. I am your shepherd and you are my flock. Listen to your heart and hear my love and feel my intent. All of this is but a fleeting existence to the greater tomorrow. Child, even your family here are nothing but mere devices in a greater story. Screw you. I said as loud as I could push out my exhausted body. Child, I gave you what you wanted most, yet you still deny me. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It said. The sound of fluttering wings is all that I heard. Time returned normally. I turned to see my family and my brother and my father. Something was wrong. They were staring at me with massive grins, unhuman grins. Their smile kept growing and slowly, I could hear the squelching of their flesh tearing as their faces distorted. I reached out to them to try and stop whatever this was, but I was frozen, forced to watch. Red was pouring from their mouths and they were crying as they feebly reached out to me. I could see their arms outstretched, twitching, as they lost full the control of their own body. It was then that I heard the trumpets again, but this time, it was a distorted, as if played of key. It was then that my brother grabbed his bicep on his right arm and dug his fingers into it. Red rushed out and sprayed on the floor as he continued to dig. The sound of things snapping and sloughing off his arm was sickening. I watched in forced horror as my brother pulled his muscles out of his own arm and painted the room in a dark red hue. 
In a short time, I heard my father start to gurgle too. I reeled back to look at him, but I wish I never did. His body was melting as a dark black liquid started to extrude out of every possible opening on his head. The smell was awful, but yet pungent. I watched and that's all that I could do, as I saw my father slowly turn into a puddle. His very body melting in my own hands and his bones crumbling to dust. I was left alone again. Even the walls around the room started to decay. The darkness swallowed me once again. Shortly after, I felt it watching me. I swear that I can hear this thing that took my family a second time was weeping. After I turned to see it, it was crying tears of red. I felt nothing but anger as I yelled every curse word in the book and I ended my tirade with, I will never help you or your kind. I will let this world burn before I bow to a monster like you. Shortly after I woke up, I sprang out of bed and splashed water on my face. The horns, the sounds this thing were plaguing me with had stopped. A moment of short reprieve. These images of my family are still in my head. Why am I chosen to bear this burden, whatever it may be? Sometimes the good has wicked intent, I suppose. Recently, the town folk have been acting really strange and last night was even worse at this point, and I'm fearing that these things are going to take me too. It all started in the morning. It felt normal at first. I woke up, made coffee, and ate some eggs in a basket, just like my father used to make. I decided to turn on my radio tower and to start broadcasting my music as I normally would, when what seems like a woman started pounding on my window. Immediately, this made me spill my boiling hot coffee on my freshly pulled out of the dryer pans. I yelled in pain, oh, what the? Once I pulled myself together, I see this woman staring at me through my window. She was covered in blood. Her eyes were as white as marbles and she was smiling. Shortly after, she started banging on the window again, this time, and I got to see it. Her hands were missing, and it was just a stub with bits of flesh hanging on it. I dropped down behind my desk and I almost vomited. This lady was my neighbor, Mrs. Jacobson. Normally, she would come by and hand me the newspaper. She and I weren't friends more, just friendly neighbors, and just my mail would often end up at her place. I didn't know what to do as she continued to pound on the window, with each consecutive hit making a sickening noise as the stomp slapped on my window, leaving more and more red behind. I stayed behind my desk as the image of her unearthly smile was burned into my brain. It wasn't more than a few minutes when she stopped. It was then that I decided to slowly peek over the edge. I just saw her standing there, staring at me. No, through me. I could feel her gaze pierce my soul. She slowly opened her mouth and it started to stretch an inhuman length, as her mouth easily grew to be about one foot long. What do you want from me? I yelled. She just kept looking with her mouth wide open. It was at this moment that I went to the window and just shut the blinds. I could hear her yelling. Nothing that makes sense, it was more just random ghoulish howling, with a voice that was far too deep for her. I called the government guys in the church. Hey, you guys said I should call if anything is out of the ordinary. Well, right now, Mrs. Jacobson is outside my home banging on my window with a nub and screaming like she's possessed. I waited a few seconds and heard nothing. Hello? I asked annoyed. Eh, we've sent a team. Lock your doors and don't let anyone or anything in. I looked around and just said, Okay, can do. My office where I run the radio out of has very heavy oak doors. It was carved by my father and was made so thick and heavy that it blocked out sound from our house. My guess was so no ambient noise could bother his work. I rushed to my office doors and right before I can close it, I heard my front door burst open. It was her. 
She lifted her only hand pointed at me with her freakishly open mouth, and this time her eyes were completely white. She screamed an ungodly scream and started a full-on sprinting at me. Now my hallway was not very long, but I was able to slam the door shut and deadbolt the door. She started banging on my door again, and I could barely hear her screams. It felt like hours of her just nonstop pounding by my door and screaming. I was stopped abruptly when I heard faint people yelling for her to get on the ground, shortly after followed by shots. I then hear the men yelling with screams. The bullets they shot left small holes in my door, large enough for me to peek through. When I peered through one of the holes, I could see this crazy lady devouring these heavily armed men. The sounds that it made were awful. The twisting and grinding and crunching. I couldn't look away, but I was absolutely mortified by this beast of a woman that I thought she was. I kept looking at her grotesque features and noticed. Her body was healing slowly, growing together. The color in her skin was coming back. She slowly turned her head all the way around like she was an owl. I could hear her spine cracking from the pressure. She could sense me watching her. We locked eyes and she stood up and slowly turned around, keeping her eyes locked on me. It was then that she sprinted at the door, scaring the crap out of me, and I fell backwards, as I could see her eyes now bright white peering through one of the holes. She then spoke, And thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, in the siege and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. She spoke in a loud and thunderous tone. It was so loud that it made me disoriented. I yelled back, What do you want from me? As my vision slowly came back to normal, she spoke again. Child, you are a key part. You will recognize your role soon enough. Right after, I saw a bright white light and heard the sound of trumpets blaring. It felt like the whole world was shaking. Items were falling off my shelf and my roof cracked as the lights got brighter and hotter. It all stopped and the light vanished. The residual heat was still there, but Mrs. Robinson, or the thing she was, was gone. I opened the door slowly. All I saw were the bodies of the men and ashes on the floor. My carpet was stained a dark crimson, and the smell of iron and burnt popcorn filled the air. I decided to shut my door and lock it again, and called the command center that was in the church. They asked what had happened. And I explained it all and told them, Come get these men off my floor and I'm not leaving this room until it's safer. I will not be destroyed by some old lady. On the other end, all I hear is, Understood, you need to stay safe there and bunker down. I hung up and started leaving this note. Right now, they're cleaning the carpet and removing all the evidence. I overheard them saying that they found a slime of some of the bodies. I don't know what to do. Whatever happens next, I sure hope I can end these dang monsters. For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. These words have been stuck in my head, playing on repeat like a broken record. I can feel my sanity fading as sleep deprivation sets in. I feel like there are eyes watching my every move, people narrating my every thought and feelings. I even stop playing music as more and more townsfolk go missing. It's only a handful that are left from the town originally. For the people who tried to help me, the holy water in the church is locked up for some reason, and I did sew some crosses on me. The pain of doing so wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It's nothing compared to the mental anguish I've been dealing with. So thank you all for the kind words and suggestions. Recently, besides the constant scripture running in my head, and the occasional townsfolk hulking out and attacking more soldiers, it's been quiet. 
no one really leaves their home. I don't get calls about the radio, and everyone seems to be surviving off the government rations that they have been giving us. If anyone was wondering, it's pretty bland. Just boxes of potato flakes, off-brand water that tastes like pool water, and bread with some bologna that looks gray in color. Day in and day out, I feel like I'm not being protected but contained, like a prisoner. They even stopped answering my calls, which started this morning. However, some real stuff went down and I'm not sure if anyone other than me, and maybe some of the town is still alive. It was shortly after I got ignored when I tried to call into the HQ and report a body in the street. It wasn't more than 5 or 10 minutes when I started hearing the horns again. This time, I learned the horns only played when someone was being targeted. I know this seems inhumane to say this, but I made test subjects out of my neighbors. Once I hear the horns, I go to all my windows and I look around, see what or who was being targeted and like clockwork, I hear it. Someone begins to scream, and then silence. After so many times that this has happened, I become numb to the cries of the people. I can't stop thinking. They are the lucky ones being taken out and not having to live with these things for much longer. I'm pulling away from the point so that after the horns this morning, I looked around all over town and saw nothing this time. I kept looking and it seems that they were all safe somehow. Shortly after, I heard gunfire coming from the church. They're being taken down. I started to hear someone calling out to me. A voice that was very familiar, but I couldn't make it out. All of a sudden, my body moved on its own accord. It was helplessly moved toward the church. It's terrifying to think that you have no control over your own body, safety, or life. With this all left to the will of these angels. Last I checked, angels don't devour humans. At least, it was never spoken about. As I started to pass the first gate, the smell of gunpowder and blood attacked my senses. It was so powerful that my eyes began to burn, and I could taste it in the back of my throat. My body slowly marched toward the front door. Bullets were still flying through the door. One struck me. The pain was unbearable, but it was only just the beginning. I could sense time slowing down, or maybe my senses were speeding up. The bullets that went through the door also had pierced my chest, my arms, and neck. Each bullet ripped into me, had me experiencing the pain for what felt like years, as time seemed to froze. I was feeling the projectiles tear into me, and I felt every inch give way to the metal. As much as I wanted to, I couldn't cry out in pain or run away. The tearing of my body had gotten so extreme I felt like I was going to expire any second. Have you ever felt your heart being pierced by hot lead? Or have the feeling of your chest cavity fill with liquid? This must be hell. I thought as my body slowly marched forward. The smoke in the church began to clear. And I saw the absolute chaos that had unfolded. Bodies were everywhere. And they were laying in ways that reminded me of a horror movie. People fused together in the floor, faces missing. One of them I stepped on, making a squelching noise as my foot peeled away a layer of them. No matter what I did or thought, I couldn't stop. My body felt like it was being controlled like a puppet on strings. When I got to the basement, the door was ripped off the hinges with the door itself pushed into the wall. Flashbacks as a child ran through my mind. I remember playing hide and seek in this basement with some of the other kids in the town many of which I've seen eating other people in all this chaos. I remember my brother and I hiding behind a stack of chairs. We pressed ourselves as low to the ground as we could. We giggled as someone nearly found us. We only got up when we could hear the other boys yell, All right, we give up. Y'all can come out now. As we stood up, I saw a black dot on my brother's neck. Shortly after, he had yelled in pain and ran out. It was a black widow who had bit him. My brother was rushed to the hospital, which was almost an hour away. And I held his hand and kept telling him, 
It'll be okay. It was just a small spider. You'll be fine. Of course, my brother was milking the attention. Some of the best acting I have ever seen was from this moment. After a few hours in the hospital, he was discharged and ever since then, he had been afraid of spiders. This memory, even with all the pain and crazy stuff, made me smile. It was a relief that was short-lived as I approached the pastor's quarters. The lights in the hall were flickering and to the left and right of me, people were standing at the wall looking at me. All of them with jet black eyes and pale skin. The people of this town were just meat suits for these things. I've grown a hatred for them, parading around doing unholy things in people who I considered were friends and family. Even when I tried to think of memories that I had with them, the images of these things were replacing them, corrupting my very thoughts. As I passed all these people, I finally got to the door. It flew open by itself and I could hear the crunching of bone. It was my brother. He was eating the blind agent. I could only wait as he was in a trance-like state. I was forced to watch my little brother, or what was my little brother, eat the eyes of this person. After the thing was full, he stood up and turned toward me. Looking in my eyes, his eyes were dark and it showed no light. It was all black and I could feel an overwhelming sense of malice as it just stared at me. My body was still unable to move as it slowly closed the distance. With each step, the feeling of dread grew, and it felt like my heart was getting louder. I could only think to myself, Is this what true fear feels like? Will I live for another moment? He got in front of me and said one thing, A war is coming, and you are a major piece in it. Will you stand by humanity or those winged beasts whom watch over and terrorize you? I cannot make the choice for you, child, but know this. I do love you. This oddly felt genuine, and the feelings of dread and malice were dissipating. I don't know how to describe it other than it felt natural. Child, I will not harm your brother as he agreed to help me speak to you. The angels above cast him aside like a broken toy. However, I found use in the boy, and together we can take over the heavens. Pray that we succeed, for I have seen the throne of God, and it was empty. Who was he? What was he? Suddenly, this being reached down and tapped my forehead, sending me into a deep sleep. I woke up nearly instantly, and was in a panic. Covered in sweat, and I surveyed my surroundings. Everything was too quiet, so I rushed to look out the window toward the church, and it was all normal again. I quickly called the operation leader, and they instantly picked up. Yes, Alex, are you okay? How are they alive? I saw my brother eat him in front of my own two eyes. I replied in a rushed and worried tone. What day is it? How long have I been asleep? Well, it's Sunday, and I would say you've been silent for two days. I guess that old lady really stressed you out. How you feeling? I could hear typing in the background as if he was typing down our conversation. I'm fine, just had a really bad dream. How many people in the town are left? I asked. Most of them are left, why? Everything okay? At this point, I decided to look outside. And I saw people walking around and talking like nothing had happened. I'll be okay, thank you. It must have been just a vivid dream. And so I hung up, not wanting to speak about it anymore. I didn't want to go through it again. After, I fell backward onto my bed, breathing in deep and letting it out. The trumpets are not playing, and it was just silence. I'm still shaken up by this since it felt so real, so I'm going to start my radio up and pretend nothing happened. There's one question on my mind. Can my brother still be saved? I may never know. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 6.12 What is time? Is it just a construct of a man to keep with the pace of our existence 
Or is it something more malleable? I can't shake the feeling that I've done this all before. The existential dread of this whole situation seems so familiar. Alright, sorry, you don't know who I am. My name is Alex and I live in this rather small farming city. We have a church on a hill and one very local grocery store. And somehow there's a Dollar General too. Life here is rather simple and easy. I wake up, I turn on my studio and I broadcast music for the town. It's nothing special, just a classic rock and some country, but I make decent money off of it. Recently, I've been experiencing stranger and stranger events. But it all feels like a dream. It all started when military trucks and other large equipment were being hauled into town. They took over the church as a base of operations, I'm guessing. They even put large fences and barbed wire all around it. Whatever they were doing had to be serious. They came to my door and asked to use the air raid siren. The only way to access it was to enter my shed and turn it on manually. When I told them this, they just said, That's fine. We'll just go into your backyard once a week and run a test, so don't mind us. I cocked my head a little, as I could have sworn that I had heard this before. Yeah, that's fine. Just knock on the door before you go back there, just in case. I'm in a stand-your-ground state, so I didn't want to catch a charge for taking out a trespasser. They just looked at me and smiled and said, We'll do, Chief. And then left and got into the truck and drove off. I looked around and across the street from me, and I could see my brother mowing his lawn. So I walked up to him wanting to speak. Hey, big bro. He stopped the engine of his mower. Hey, little dude, how've you been? How's the wife doing? He smiled and said, Great, but we have big news. I looked at him puzzled. Well, what is it? Sammy's pregnant. We just tested this morning and I feel like since you've helped me so much in life, you can be the baby's official godparent and uncle, of course. I cracked a large smile ear to ear. Wow, I'm so happy for you guys. My brother then just put his arms around me and we shared a hug. It was nice considering all that we've been through together. Why don't we have dinner here tonight? I'm grilling ribs and the wife is making potato salad. You know, it's your favorite. Hmm, that sounds perfect. I've been wanting some home-cooked meals. I've been swamped with work and school recently. He just said, Alright, I'll see you then, but I need to mow. It won't cut itself. I waved goodbye and walked back to my home so I could start the next playlist on the radio. When I get back home and when I open the door, a wave of emotion hits me like a ton of bricks. I started crying, but I don't know why. My heart is racing and I could feel anxiety rushing in. I tried composing myself enough to get to my bed, but I just laid there sobbing. Why am I sad? Why is this happening? I thought to myself. Shortly after, I get a knock on my door. It somehow pulled me out of the anxiety attack, which was good. I opened it, and a man with a look to be cataracts in his eyes greeted me. Hello, Mr. York. How are you? I looked at him a bit puzzled. Just call me Alex, and I'm doing fine. Can I help you? I felt a bit put off by this man. He looked to be blind, but he climbed up the stairs without aid, and he drove here. Oh yes, we need to use the siren and we want you to stay inside for a few hours. It's for your own safety. I started to panic a little bit but kept it under so he wouldn't notice. Sure thing, it's back in the shed. The man looked at me and just said, Thank you. Just lock your door and close your blinds. The siren will tell you the rest. I said, Well, aren't you going to be in danger too? He just started to walk away and yell out, I'll be fine, Alex. The anxiety was welling up my throat again, so in a hurry, I locked my door and closed my blinds. Shortly after, I heard the sirens go off. Stay inside and go to the nearest room without windows. If you can't, close the blinds and cover your eyes and ears. This is not a drill. Do not leave for any reason. If someone is caught leaving, they will be marked as a threat. 
If you hear knocks at the window or door, do not answer it even if it's family or friends, and even if they're in a dire situation. Again, this is not a drill, and we will let you know when to come back out. It's highly specific. I hope my brother will be okay. I waited there in my office and I heard a song on the radio playing and it was one of my favorites. Time is on my side by the Rolling Stones. It reminded me of my father a lot. Him and mom used to sing this song to us. The Rolling Stones were his favorite band. But all this daydreaming was cut short as I heard a shot across the street. I peek through my blinds and I see my brother. He was being attacked. This thing that looked like our friend Aaron but with grotesque and elongated limbs with a massive jaw. My instincts told me to hide but I couldn't. I couldn't let my brother get hurt. So I ran out and I sprinted toward his home. I needed to catch my breath but I could see his front door ripped off its hinges. I was about to look inside being cautious. Maybe I can catch this thing off guard, I thought to myself. So I peered into his home. It was the worst thing that I could imagine. A fine mist of red lingered in the air. I can taste it in the back of my throat. I almost gagged when I looked further in. It was Sammy. This thing was devouring Sammy. It sat hunched over her body, just feasting. I blacked out. After a while, I quickly regain consciousness, and I see the figure stand up with no sign of my brother or his wife. No blood on the floor, just a pile of black ash. The thing turned to me, but as we locked eyes, it started to distort my vision. Every time I tried to focus on it, it would disappear. But I look slightly away and in my peripherals. It looked to have changed its shape. A mass of wings, seven, no eight of them, circling something in the middle of it all. It slowly glided to me and I was frozen in place, unable to move or react. My chest felt like it was going to explode. And then it spoke. Its voice sounded like a rusty can being scraped by a fork with the faint sound of horns in the distance. Its thunderous voice shook my very existence as it spoke and it said, Be not afraid, child. You will be saved as you are a saint. I keep thinking back to where I've heard this and I can't remember. Was it a dream? In that moment, the mass of wings slowly moved toward me. In that moment, everything went black. I saw things I couldn't make out darting across the void in my mind. I had a scream in my ear and what got louder was the sound of a trumpet. Six blasts from a trumpet. No, it was seven. The thunderous voice spoke in my dreamscape. We will meet again, child. A war is coming. I woke slowly but in the distance. I could hear the flapping of wings and the siren go off once more. Civilians, the coast is clear. I repeat, the coast is clear. We ask you to stay in your home so we can do some more research. Please bear with us a little longer, thank you. Within mere seconds, I was surrounded by men armed to the teeth. Holy crap, he's alive! One of them picked me up and three other men rushed into my brother's home. What happened to my brother? I was still barely able to stand on my own. My head was still spinning. He's gone, I'm sorry. I gained a bit more consciousness and realized what he just said. What do you mean, gone? I was fuming. Something had just eaten my brother and his wife. We can't explain right now. We'll just go home and rest and we'll send someone to speak to you. I reluctantly walked back. But what can I do? Fight the armed men who were just trying to help me. It wasn't their fault. I clambered back into my home and went straight to my bed and I collapsed. I can't put my finger on it, but I sense a deja vu. It's all too familiar and I can't shake this feeling. As I laid on my bed, reliving the thoughts of my brother and dying and seeing his wife being devoured, this whole thing seems so surreal. 
It wasn't but an hour later when I heard knocking at my door. I got up to answer it, and to my surprise, it was the same blind man. Hello, Mr. York. I need to speak with you. I waved him in and sat at the kitchen table. Can I get you anything to drink? Um, what's your name? He smiled. My name is Lucy, and yes, do you have a Coke? I blinked a few times. All right, Lucy, coming right off. I brought two cans of Coke, slid him his across my table. So, what was that thing and what do you want from me? He takes a deep sip of his drink and lets out a sigh. Oh, Alex, we know who you are and what you are. Haven't you felt like you've done this all before? It's time to give up on resisting, Alex. We need you. I looked at him puzzled and asked, What do you mean? He stood up and placed his glasses on the table. His eyes were pitch black. Light didn't even shine in them. It was all empty, like an endless void. I, uh, what's wrong with your eyes? He chuckled lightly. Oh, don't worry, child. Join my cause and we shall return your brother. I started to sweat. My heart was racing faster than my mind. Who and what is this man? It was then that he reached out and grabbed my hand. I was unable to move as I saw the future. Life and death, the start of the universe and the decay of it all flooded my mind. I felt I was everywhere at the same time. He suddenly let go and all the vision stopped. Do you understand now, child? We were destined to take over the heavens. You were meant for greater things. I, I can't believe it so, I asked. This is all too much right now. Can we do this later? He shook his head. You have until midnight or all of this will come full circle. I looked at him and he let out a long sigh. Fine, I need to do something first. He just got up and walked out of the door. It looked like he understood. So, here I am now. I know it's a lot to unpack, but I can't shake this feeling of deja vu.